think they fixed the air conditioning. How about that? Hey, everybody. How is everyone? Okay. Thank you. It's good to see you. Good to be back. Okay, so we have a lot going on today, certainly, and I want to start out uh, talking a little bit about Hurricane Irma. And the first thing I want to say about that is that our condolences are certainly with those who have lost so much, including their loved ones, from the destruction of Hurricane Irma. We are continuing to monitor the path and also the impact of Hurricane Irma as the situation continues to evolve. We have no greater priority than the safety and security of U.S. citizens who are overseas. We've said that many times from this podium, and uh, today would be no more of a perfect moment uh, than now to mention that again. Since Tuesday, our embassies have issued security messages and also travel warnings for the affected countries to inform U.S. citizens of the storm and to recommend that they begin making preparations to either depart or to shelter in place. The State Department has regular contact with our embassies to ensure that we have the latest information on our operations, U.S. citizen needs, and disaster assistance plans. We are communicating also with foreign authorities. In terms of our embassy operations and travel warnings, we continue to update information for U.S. citizens on the Hurricane Irma page at travel.state.gov and also through our emergency and security messages. The Department of State has authorized non-emergency U.S. government employees and family members to depart the Dominican Republic, Haiti, and also Cuba. Cuba. We have ordered the departure of all family members and non-emergency U.S. government employees from the Bahamas. As a storm passes through the region, our embassies will continue to provide emergency counselor services to U.S. citizens. In terms of emergency contact information, and this is important for folks who have family members, loved ones, and friends who are traveling in the Caribbean. If you are in the United States and are worried about a family member traveling there, again, this is in a foreign country, uh, not, in, uh, not in the United States, you can inform the Department of State about U.S. citizens affected by the hurricane who require emergency assistance through our website. You can go to travel.state.gov or you can call us at the following number. 1-888-407-4747. That's from the U.S. and Canada. If you're calling from overseas, that number is 202-501-4444. In addition to that, our uh, sister agency, USAID, is uh, providing some important uh, information and some important teams on the ground, and they'll have some additional information uh, for you on that coming forward. We are committed to working with partners in the region to provide life-saving assistance as our neighbors in the Caribbean respond to the disaster. USAID officially activated a disaster assistance response team, many of you know that is DART, as Irma continues its destructive pass acro path across the Caribbean. Disaster experts on DART were deployed to Haiti, Dominican Republic, Barbados, and also the Bahamas ahead of the storm, and they're now coordinating with local authorities and humanitarian organizations on the ground to deliver vital assistance as soon as conditions allow. I'd like to recognize those brave Americans who are willing to go in what is potentially harm's way in order to save or assist others. DART is comprised of experienced disaster response officials who are conducting damage and needs assessment. They're working with local authorities and our humanitarian partners to coordinate distribution of emergency food assistance and relief supplies. USAID will have more information on this uh, in sometime later today. Uh, in addition to that, there's a matter we've gotten a, a lot of questions from you uh, recently on, and it's something that we care about deeply here, and that is uh, the situation taking place in Burma. Uh, I'd like to talk about this as a follow-on to the two statements that have recently been released from both the State Department and the U.S. U.N. since the violence erupted there in late August. We are deeply concerned by the troubling situation in Burma's northern Rakhine state. There has been a significant displacement of local populations following serious allegations of human rights abuses, including mass burnings of Rohingya villages and violence conducted by security forces and also armed civilians. We ad again condemn deadly attacks on Burmese security forces, but join the international community in calling on those forces to prevent further violence and protect local populations in ways that are consistent with the rule of law and with full respect for human rights. We urge all in Burma, including in the Rakhine State, to avoid actions that exacerbate tensions there. We welcome the government of Burma's acknowledgement of the need to protect all communities and its pledge to implement recommendations of the Advisory Commission on the Rakhine State aimed at addressing longstanding challenges that predate the country's democratic transition. 
We call on authorities to facilitate immediate access to affected communities that are in need of urgent humanitarian assistance. The United States is working through the United Nations and other international organizations to assist tens of thousands of civilians who have fled to southeastern Bangladesh since August the 25th. We are also communicating with Burma's neighbors and other concerned international partners on efforts to end the violence and assist affected communities there. I would be happy to take your questions on that, but first I have one final thing. Uh, and I'd like to say we are very pleased to uh, host the leaders of the state of Kuwait here in Washington this week. We got a late start today, as you well know, because we wanted, um, of course, the president and the emir of Kuwait uh, to finish up their meetings and their press conference at the White House. As you know, the president uh, just met with His Highness Emir al Sabah at the White House. And tomorrow here at the State Department, we will host the second annual United States-Kuwait Strategic Dialogue, which is co-hosted by Secretary Tillerson and the first Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Kuwait. Kuwait is a strong regional partner, and we look forward to tomorrow's meeting on education, trade, investment, homeland security, and also military cooperation. We also want to continue to thank Kuwait for its strong diplomatic efforts in trying to resolve the ongoing Gulf dispute. And with that, I would be happy to take your questions. We'd like to start today. Sure, okay. Why don't we go right back to Myanmar? Mm -hmm. uh, you said in your statement just now that um, you know the U.S. welcomes the call from the, the government of Burma for the need to protect uh, all different communities. That certainly hasn't been the predominant message from Aung San Suu Kyi's government in the last several weeks. Do you, does the U.S. have confidence or faith at this point in the um, efforts or desire of the government of Myanmar to protect the Rohingya community? Well, I, I think there are a few things going on there. Um, as you all as journalists who are passionate about foreign affairs well know, that it is a difficult place to get information from. It's difficult to get access to. Uh, we'd like to certainly call on the government of Burma to allow better, greater access for reporters and general, journalists. Uh, to be able to enter that country and be able to provide accurate information about what's going on in the ground. There also remains a humanitarian situation where it is very difficult for humanitarian aid groups to be able to get in and provide the supplies and the support uh, that is necessary. We are continuing to have conversations with, with the government not only about the violence there, but also about those issues of journalists and also uh, per perhaps more importantly, uh, the humanitarian aid situation. Our ambassador uh, over there, he and I, um, Ambassador Scott Marcel, uh, exchanged emails earlier today to talk a little bit about the situation. Uh, he's been on a plane uh, and has met numerous times with the government, three times in fact, in um, I believe it was just this week alone. So we remain very engaged in that. So the U.S. does have tools at your disposal. Obviously, we had a, a pretty broad sanctions regime against Myanmar. Some of that has been lifted in recent years. Is the U.S. considering putting back sanctions or adding new sanctions to try to push back on these these allegations of human rights violations that you were just describing? I think, and I don't want to sound like a broken record on the issue of sanctions, but it's something that we don't want to get ahead of the conversations that we're having. We're having diplomatic conversations at this point. Uh, any potential sanctions are just not something that I could comment on this time, either uh, assuming that they might happen or might not happen. Let's, let's stay on this issue before we switch to the next one. Yeah. The leader claims, you know, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi, she claims that uh, uh, this thread by fake news. Is, she said, say that again? She what? This whole crisis yes. is uh, stoked by fake news and the trading with fake news and so on. Now, the U.S., has the U.S. been able to authenticate you know, the calamity that is taking place and the size of it well, that, on its own. That's exactly why I mentioned how mm -hmm. difficult it is. I mean, there are, it is a difficult country to get into. It is a difficult country to get around. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have the roads and infrastructure uh, that many other countries do have. So it's a difficult terrain in order to be able to get the facts on the ground uh, that are accurate. That's why uh, we certainly call on that country to help facilitate journalists being able to come in, aid groups to be able to come in. We work with those organizations, the aid groups, very closely and carefully in order to try to best assess the situation. It's a complicated situation. It's a complicated um, country and the situation going on there. We don't want to do anything that would inflame tensions, but we hope that we can get uh, more solid information from the ground there. Okay. Hey, Michelle. Hi. What kind of um, engagement has Secretary Tillerson himself had on this issue in the last two weeks. Um, have there been phone calls? Uh, 
how has he been involved? This is something that I, I know the Secretary cares about. Um, this is something where we have uh, phone calls and diplomatic conversations that have certainly been had at various levels. I don't have any calls uh, to read out for you right now, but uh, as we do, I will certainly let you know. Okay. Hi, Liz. Hi. Um, it seems as if, you know, we haven't really heard from Secretary Tillerson about any diplomatic efforts um, going on. Is that because you, you know, don't feel like you want to discuss them right now, or is that because the administration is leading with more of a, you know, kind of deterrent on, on message? The, on this specific on issue, you're Korea. talking about yeah. Burma? Oh, sorry. Are you talking about Burma, or are we, are we moving sorry, on to North we're Korea? moving on to North Korea. Okay, at least wake up this morning. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, let's stick with Burma before we move on to something else, please. Anybody else on Burma? Hi there. You're, you're that the secretary hasn't spoken to anyone. I'm so no, I, ju I just don't have any calls to read out for you at this time. This is a subject that has come up a lot. A lot of people are talking about this here at the State Department. You all are focusing on this now. Our ambassador has made three trips uh, to uh, the capital this week alone, and so it's something that we just continue to focus on, and we will continue to monitor it. Do you have any? Uh, do you think Aung San Suu Kyi is doing enough to prevent the violence? Look. There is access, very, very limited, if any, access to humanitarian um, needs and equipment and supplies. Uh, that would be one of our top concerns. We're concerned about the violence uh, there. That includes allegations of violence conducted by both security forces and civilians. We would like all sides to try to calm the tensions. Uh, what we've seen there has been very concerning. Uh, to the U.S. government as we care about what is happening to the population there. The U.S. Embassy is following the developments very closely. Um, and let me just again mention that it's very difficult to verify some of the reports in light of the security situation there. I'll just I'll, I'll leave it at that. Obviously, we all would like to have more access for journalists in, in Myanmar, yeah. but I mean, you guys have an embassy in Naypyidaw. You're not saying that the U.S. can't determine whether or not well, these allegations of, are fake news unless well, there there's are, more Well, some of these areas are areas of open conflict which we can't necessarily get out there and, you know, get on the ground as State Department employees uh, when there is open conflict have, have there. Have American diplomats been in Rakhine State to try to look at this? Uh, I, I can look into that for you. I don't know if we've had anybody exactly right there. Okay, uh, let's move on to, let's move on something else. Do you have anything to say on whether you think uh, Aung San Suu Kyi should keep her Nobel Peace Prize? I wouldn't have anything to comment on that. You, that would be up for the price. Do you yes. urge Bangladesh authority to allow Rohingya refugees in their country as thousands of Rohingya refugees in, in the border to get in the Bangladesh? You know, I, I know it is a difficult situation uh, for Bangladesh, as it is for any country, to absorb refugees. We have provided, I believe it's about $55 million uh, this year in uh, to Bur Burmese refugees, not only uh, in Burma, but I believe also in Bangladesh. If I have anything more for you on that, I'll, I'll get that to you. Hi there. Thank Hi, you. Jenny. Nice to see you. Uh, on North Korea, uh, okay. do you have any detail on uh, new sanctions on North Korea? You know I'm going Thank to say you. this. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> We're never going to forecast sanctions. I think what you're referring to is uh, what many are talking about at the United Nations, and that is a situation I'm just not going to forecast not right now. About it. It's a draft resolution that's been released to the council for a vote. So that is a detail of a draft resolution, and that's something we don't go into the details of a draft resolution on di current diplomatic conversations. But you've all read the news, you've seen the reports, and so. What about Russia's, that. Uh, Hold on, we're not going to Russia just no, 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 yet. Russia's comments preemptively uh, uh, opposing any type of sanctions against yeah. North Korea. Look, um, we have had Russia's cooperation at the UN Security Council in the past. Uh, what the DPRK has done, and it's you know, we all know what happened on Sunday night. We all have not yet been together since uh, those activities occurred. The I'm talking about the testing that that took place. Yes. Yeah. Um, what I want to say about that is that this is not just a security situation for the United States. It's not just a security problem for the United States. This is a security problem for the world. China recognizes that. I think Russia recognizes that. We're getting different levels of cooperation. We were certainly happy uh, when Russia backed the last round of UN Security Council resolutions. Uh, China did certainly as well. Um, what is the um, administration assessment of the 
pressure campaign, given that uh, you've had the intelligence assessment come public that uh, they've miniaturized a, a warhead, you've had a missile fly over Japan, and you've had a hydrogen test. Yeah. Uh, is it working? Yeah, I, I, that's a fair question. I mean, a lot of people look at the recent events that have occurred, especially on Sunday night, and ask, is the pressure campaign, is your diplomatic campaign working? It's a legitimate question. Uh, it is what we do here at the State Department. We look at pushing and continuing the conversation about the pressure campaign and putting pressure on the DPA, DPRK to denuclearize. China shares that concern with us. They also support denuclearization, as does virtually every uh, country across the globe. It is an important issue for us, and it's an important issue for them. Yes, I can say uh, that the pressure campaign is working. Now, when you see a test that took place on Sunday, you may think, Goodness, that is not working, but that is not the case, and here's why. It can take a long, long time for sanctions to work. It can take a long time for a pressure campaign to work. It is not an overnight thing. It's not a big, sexy military operation. This is handled very, very differently. We will continue to push forward with this campaign. We are having success. Uh, one of the best areas of success that we can point to are all of the countries that we've had diplomatic conversations with, where we have asked those countries and discussed with those countries, and they frankly support it as well, closing down the size of, or ex excuse me, not closing down the size, limiting the size of uh, DPRK uh, missions in their own countries, limiting the number of guest workers. We've seen uh, some recent success in Spain, in Peru, also Kuwait with regard to that, just to name a few. Um, there are also the uh, independent sanctions that other countries have been willing to do. We've seen that with Australia and many other partners in the region as well. This all will take time. It will take time to help remove that money that the DPRK is getting and we believe is going to its illegal nuclear and ballistic missile programs. It'll take time to get that money out to really force that regime to come around. Just real quick, when you yeah. say that um, China shares uh, the U.S. concerns, um, is it concerned enough? Yeah, we've always said this. Uh, China has – China can certainly do more. Um, it's also a country that is willing to do some things behind the scenes, and we're happy with that. We don't need to be so public. We don't need to take the credit. We don't need countries uh, to thump their chests in order to show exactly what's going on. This is what diplomacy is. Sometimes it's quiet. Sometimes it's not so fun for people who are covering it because you may not have much to publicly point to, but there are things going on behind the scenes, I can assure you, that is giving us cause to be hopeful for the future. Again, um, this is something that will take some, quite some time. It's not going to have it happen overnight, but that's what we do here. We'll keep pushing forward. I, okay. it, isn't it, though, like, isn't it a little bit of a race against time? Because if you're saying that it'll take a long, long time, in your words, and, you know, some of the commanders have estimated that by the end of the in a year, in less than a year's time, North Korea not only could have – they've already demonstrated well, I, I think the IB, least that's, ICBM, but also married it. And so – That's why I think we have uh, – this U.S. government has a multi-pronged approach. Diplom diplomacy is just one part of that. Uh, you heard Secretary Mattis talking about the military piece of it. Uh, you've heard uh, Secretary Mnuchin talk about the Treasury portion of it. We have Ambassador Haley, who's talking about the UN Security Council portion of it. So we're all working in concert together. I'm just speaking to our one piece of it, and we're plowing ahead. We're moving forward. But I mean, if you're hoping for a diplomatic solution, well, that's I mean, always you, the preferred. Have the, I know that's I always the preferred pr I approach, understand. the diplomatic yeah, exactly. solution. So, are are you, do you think you have enough time? If the sanctions are going to take a really long time. Do you think you have enough time to let a diplomatic we solution are, play out? We are going ahead with a diplomatic solution. We are asking countries, our allies, our friends, uh, our neighbors, you name it. Anybody we'll sit down and talk with, we are asking them to assist us. And it's not just assisting the United States. It's not, hey, help the United States here. It's help the world. Because the world has joined in condemning the United Nations, excuse me, uh, the United Nations, the European Union, NATO. All of these uh, nations and entities are coming together uh, uh, condemning DPRK for its activities. So it's not just us. We're all helping out one another. Just, just one last one. Um, the president didn't answer when asked today whether um, part of a solution would be accepting North Korea's nuclear status. Um, what does uh, the administration and particular Secretary Taylor Our administration's view has not changed. Um, we have long called for the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. I understand, yeah. but if you, um, you know, 
part of the problem is that, you know, even before this administration, North Korea's program has grown considerably, as you um, can see. And well, let's point out, it's taken many, many years to get here. Well, I yeah. understand, but, you know, at some point, do you have a choice but to accept them as a nuclear state? Our, our position has not changed. Uh, which is? We which want is the denuclearization of North Korea. That is what we want. That is what we are pushing for. We will not accept, as Secretary Tillerson has said, a nuclearized North Korea. As a, uh, why do you put in a uh, diplomatic solution did not work? What if it doesn't work? Yes. Well, we have a we have the whole of government approach. Uh, yeah, we yeah. have the Department of Defense. We have the Treasury Department. We have the United Nations, the United Nations Security Council, and we have our piece here at the State Department. So we're just going to keep pushing forward. I'm not going to get into hypotheticals, but we're going to keep pushing forward, and that will not change. We are committed to this. When this president first came into office, his top national security priority, he said, is this, the DPRK, and put Secretary of State Rex Tillerson in charge of that, and that's what we are pushing forward with. So, yes, uh, it has all options on the table. So all options are yeah, still on the table. That's why yeah. we have this multi-pronged government approach. Okay. I think we've exhausted this. Let's move in. Okay. I understand that you won't talk about the draft resolution yeah. um, at the UN, but is there any way you can discuss how the State Department feels in terms of cutting off oil to North Korea? Is that something that you guys think is imperative? Where does that fall on the list of diplomatic pressure? It, it could be something that would be uh, potentially a, a very big deal if that were to happen, and that's that's all I'll say about that. Is okay. Tillerson making calls to other countries specifically on that topic? He's made a lot of calls. Uh, I don't have a readout or a list of all the calls that he has made recently, but he has been on the phone a lot since Sunday night. Has he got, well, he always and is, as a matter of fact. Well, talking specifically about the DPRK. Uh, whether it's been oil and that, uh, that I'm not aware of, but we continue to have a, a full, robust approach to our um, to what we're looking at with the DPRK. Okay, let's move Number on to something one, else. Okay, uh, hi. saying that uh, sanctions can only be part of a uh, package with some kind of dialogue. So is some dialogue, direct talks with uh, North Korea still a goal for you after the latest test? Well, it's certainly, we, we would always like to be able to sit down and talk. But North Korea is showing the world that it is not serious, and it is nowhere near the point where it wants to talk. Uh, what they did over the weekend and what they've done recently is a tremendous security concern to the world. When they're willing to show us that they are serious about sitting down and having conversations, um, we will know it. Uh, we think we will be uh, watching for the signals, and we'll just go from there. What did they do over the weekend? Was it a hydrogen test? Um, I believe there's, there's a very specific term that we want to call it, and I think it's an advanced nuclear test. I think that's what we're referring to it as the U.S. government. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Another nuclear test soon or missile? That I'm not going to forecast into what what could or could not happen in the future. Okay, let's let's move on from North Korea. Saeed, hello. How are you? Thank you. Welcome back. Good Thank you. you. Uh, very quick questions. Uh, first pertaining. To press freedom, the Palestinian Authority arrested a Palestinian uh, peace activist, uh, 25 members of Congress, sent a letter to Secretary Tillerson. Uh, Say the last part again about 25 members of Congress uh -huh. sent a letter uh, yes. to okay. Secretary Tillerson. Are you aware of that letter uh, you know, calling on him to use leverage so to have this person released today? Nine more members of Congress sent a letter to President Abbas. So. I, I'm aware of that letter uh, that was sent to Secretary Tillerson, and we've certainly seen the reports of the arrest that you mentioned uh, in general, and, and I'll say this again. Uh, it's important that governments protect the freedom of expression, uh, the freedom of speech, and in, be able to uh, create an atmosphere where all voices can be heard. Mm -hmm. And my other question pertaining to Ambassador David Friedman, mm -hmm. he, uh, he, he, he gave us uh, an interview to the Jerusalem Post last week, last Friday, okay. and uh, he termed the Palestinian territories as allegedly occupied. Mm -hmm. Has there been any departure from standard U.S. position that these territories are occupied? Uh, our, our position on that hasn't changed. Uh, the comment does not represent a shift in U.S. policy. Okay, but he is the ambassador of the United States. His America. comment does not represent a shift in U.S. policy. Thank you. Okay. Go back to the, the journalist that was jailed yeah. for Hi, a Matt. second. Yeah. What are you We're doing talking. over there? You two are confusing me. You switched well, sides. I had to finish up writing about the, the Kuwait press conference. Got it. Okay. Um, just you may you're talking about Isa Amra, right? right. Yes. 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 And do you take a position on, on, on the extent, extended detention that was a judge ordered today and the fact that 
this likely means that, I mean, he was supposed to come to the United States later this, I believe, later this month. Mm. Um, and do you have anything more to say? I'm not aware of the announcement okay. of an extended detention. If we have anything for that, I can see what I can find out for you. Okay? All right. Let's move on to something else. Hi. Okay. Let's. Um, Russia President Putin says Russia reserves right to us to more U.S. diplomats. So if U.S. and Russia talk about full parity, it's not 455 U.S. diplomats in Moscow, but minus 155. Do you have any comments about that? You know, I, I don't want to speculate on any potential Russian actions. Uh, we have talked for some time here about how our relationship with Russia is at a low point. Uh, we would like that relationship to improve. We don't want to continue this kind of diplomatic tit for tat. There are far too many areas where we can, we hope we can cooperate uh, with Russia. One of them would be Syria, for example, uh, where that ceasefire is now, what are we at, two months now, six weeks? Something like that. But we're pleased with that. So my point is, I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to, you know, get into forecasting and any potential Russian reaction to that. But we hope that the relationship can improve. And we hope we've hit the low point and can just improve things from here on up. At the same time, we can see Russia release video um, showing U.S. law enforcement agencies conducting unknown activities uh, inside the building of Russia consult generals. I'm sorry, you work for? Uh, I work for uh, China Central Television. Oh, CCTV. I, yes. Okay, got it. Uh, the thing is, this kind of issue arouses lots of attention at the moment. Do you have any explanation? So I, I think what you're talking about is when our officials went through some of the facilities uh, with the Russians. There were uh, two places. First of all, let me just say that um, Russian officials were invited to come along with us as we toured those facilities uh, last weekend. Um, they chose not to accompany us uh, on the New York walkthrough. Uh, for whatever reason, I simply do not know. Um, it is certainly in our authority to be able to, to look around, and I'll just leave it at that. Oh, wait a second. Just the yeah. tour is. You describe these as a tour? I, uh, what, do you want, what do you call it? What would you call well, it? I don't know. A did search? They, did, they, I, did, did they open closets? I, I they, would assume they, they open closets, but I haven't talked to any of the people who did that. That's not really a tour. <laughs> so like, you're, you're, okay. A tour sounds like it's like a sightseeing thing. Like you walk in and say, oh, look at that. There's a nice painting. There's, <laughs> this is. There was a this, is a, this is a very serious activity. Right. It was no, a very I serious there activity. Was a, there was a search. And right? if I use the word tour, and that seemed too light in fitting of uh, the activity that took place, then pardon me for that. Well, okay. Is this normal Hold protocol? On. Is this normal diplomatic protocol? I'm sorry, sir. What's your name? Uh, Bill Jones with Executive Intelligence Review. Is this Hi, a Bill. normal diplomatic protocol when you ask a country to leave? They usually can gather their stuff, destroy whatever they have, which is sensitive, and leave. The FBI doesn't barge in and look at everything they've got. It seems in the case of the trade mission, this is uh, exactly what they did. President Putin said he would take a suit, a lawsuit against it. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure he did. Welcome to the American legal system. Uh, Mr. Putin United has States. apparently met the legal system then in the United States. Um, look. I don't know uh, exactly what is uh, the FBI's protocol, but I do know that our inspections, whatever you want to call it, going through uh, the properties was uh, something that we conducted lawfully. The searches in the searches in the other two cities, San Francisco and D.C., the Russians did accompany the Americans on those? Yes, they only chose not to accompany us on the New York walkthrough. And on those two that they did accompany, did they complain or did they protest when, when the agents or whoever it was, the U.S. security, were, went through closets and cupboards and... Uh, not, not that I'm aware of. I, I can try to find out from our folks who were along for the ride, but... I mean, you know, I mean, was, was this like a... Like a police search, or do they rip open mattresses and like upholstery off not, chairs? Not that I'm aware of. Not far. that I'm aware of. And the other thing, just having to do with Russia, is President Putin has uh, expressed some <clears throat> um, disappointment regrets. or regret mm -hmm. at having awarded now Secretary Tillerson the uh, Order of Friendship. I'm wondering, uh, what does the Secretary think of that? If you know. Is he, is he willing to perhaps return the award since? I know? have not asked him that question. Um, very interesting comment uh, from President Vladimir Putin. Um, the, uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Interesting comment. The Secretary has good friends as America. We're welcome. We certainly welcome our many friends and partners from 
Canada to Spain to uh, our many, many friends around the world and would gladly stand up our friends to uh, Vladimir Putin's friends. Well, you know, is it something that he has on, like, display? in his office? Is it, is it something that he would like to Did you take your silly pills today? What, no, what's that in you? I'm just wondering, I mean, is this a big deal to him? That, 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 I, that, honestly, that, Matt, I have not asked him. I have not asked him that question. We know that there are leaders around the world who will say uh, sometimes humorous, sometimes sarcastic, off-the-cuff remarks, and I'll just leave it at that. Do you see it as sarcastic and off-the-cuff, or do you see it as, um, you know, President Putin kind of saying that, like, well, when he worked with Exxon, he was more friendlier than when he's the Secretary I, I, of State. I don't, I don't know what Vladimir Putin was thinking. I just, I don't, I can't get into his head. I don't, I don't know. Let's move on. Let's move on to something else. Yeah. The searches were not carried out by the FBI. Yeah, they, they, oh. they were inspections, and it was with diplomatic security. I don't know if that came through clearly. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's just make that clear for everybody. Uh, Robert, our press operations uh, director of Foreign Service Officer, he's been here many years. Thank you for clarifying that. So the FBI was not involved, contrary to, sir, to what, uh, what you had said, not involved in those searches. Okay. That was diplomat that, excuse me, that was diplomatic security agents. Uh, they are a part of the State Department. They're trained federal agents. Okay. Excuse me, what was the legal basis for entering Russian property without Russia's consent? How can you explain this? Ma'am, this is something that uh, we, the Russian government, said that it wanted to get to parity. Russian government said it wanted to get to parity. And now our missions, this, our number of our buildings are closer to parity. Okay? And I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay? Let's move on. Okay. Hold on. Go ahead. Hi. Can you update us on the status of um, visa processing at the mission in Russia? Is it still no longer going on? Nope, what that uh, visa processing resumed. I believe it was September 1st. Let me double check on that. It is, yeah, that's correct. Uh, visa processing resumed on September 1st. We still do not have the number of consular affairs or regular staff for that member, uh, for that matter, uh, working in our, our embassy, so we're not able to process visa applications as quickly. We know lots of Russians want to visit the United States. This is a great place to come. We support all kinds of freedoms, including freedom of, uh, freedom of speech, uh, free press, and all of those things. Um, so we certainly understand that a lot of people would want to come here to visit. We're working on processing those through. Can I okay. Up something yeah. you just said about, about parity? Like, what is um, the U.S. searching um, a Russian property have to do with parity? We Okay, first of all, and I guess you guys find this funny, but some chuckles in the back here. Um, I just want to point that out, that the whole no, reason, the I whole understand. reason that this occurred was because uh, the government of Russia said that they wanted parity. They asked a lot of our members to leave from our properties uh, in, in, right. the, in Russia. Right. And so here we're trying to get back to parity, right. okay? And these are, all of this was conducted in accordance to the Foreign Missions Act. It was all conducted in accordance uh, with the Vienna Conventions. Okay? Well, but I, I'm just curious, like, do you still consider that sovereign Russian property? Or were those um, properties searched because there was a concern that they were being used for intelligence purposes, which would be like a different issue? Than parity because you know the Russians kind of close. At least I'm, I'm not going to get into that what? right now. Okay, what? I'm just not going to get into that. No, let's move. I, let's I'm move. So, I'm so, let's I'm move on to something else right I, now. I, I, I want to know what whether it's because a concern about the property itself because I'm not sure that an some of these of matters parity, I'm not going to I'm not going to get into and debate with you here from the podium. When I can give you additional information, I certainly will. Would be happy to. Could you take a question though, maybe perhaps, or consider taking a question? Are you aware of in Russia or any other country where U.S. missions yeah. that have been vacated yeah. Yeah. have been searched by the host? Um, government, whether it's their F, their version of the FBI or their version of diplomatic security, I, or that. you know what? I, I don't know if you all are working for RT today or what, but I, I <laughs> no, 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 no. It's come on. <laughs> So I, can well, be, I can be funny too, Matt. Come on, you're joking. No, but around. The, but no, I mean, look, there's a broader. There's a broader. I, I will ask here. that question. Uh, I don't know. I've been here four months. I don't know right, the normal process. Fine. Thank you uh, for asking. I don't know the normal process for uh, going through those facilities, but I will look into that. Okay. Specifically about the Russian property, about the U.S. properties in Russia that you had to close because of the parity issue. Were they searched by Russia? At least I don't know the answer to that question. I will look into it and see what I can get for you, okay? Yeah. Does anybody Sarah. have any anything else on other issues? Yeah. Hi, Sarah. Syria, really quick. Uh, the Iranians bombed uh, a target uh, in, uh, in, in Syria. Uh, 
saying that it was in fact a, a chemical weapon, but apparently the message that is being sent, one to Russians and one to the Syrians and Iran, uh, and the third one to the United States of America, because it seems that they have been lifted out of the, the process that you spoke about, the ceasefire that took place a couple of months ago. Is that, is that how you see it? Have you spoken to them about the reason for this attack and whether it is actually the message is that they should not be lifted out of any agreement? I don't have anything for you on that. Okay. I'm, I'm aware of the report. I just don't have anything for you on that. Hey, Michelle. Appropriations Committee passed a bill today to um, add $10 billion back into the state operations budget. I saw what that, yeah. Does the Secretary think about that? You know, I, I, it's, it's a situation where um, we are in the process, or the Senate, I should say, is in the, pro the appropriations process. Um, I certainly saw that that uh, number would take, uh, that number was suggested. Um, we s certainly look forward to continuing to answer questions uh, from members of the Senate and also the House. Uh, we have two officials who are testifying. Uh, our ambassador for counterterrorism, Nathan Sales, I believe is before the House Foreign Relations Committee today. Is that right? He's House Foreign Relations. Where yeah, he's at House Foreign Relations, yeah, where he's uh, testifying on the budget. And Ambassador Alice Wells, who is the Acting Assistant Secretary of SCA, she is um, she's on the Hill testifying <coughs> on the budget as well. So we'll just wait as that appropriations process works its way through. Uh, w what should we expect? Because next week, I guess, is a deadline, the the fifteenth for the redesign. Or is that are we going to see the whole redesign by then, or are you still in the process? Uh, I'm not sure where that stands today. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, one one more question. Yeah. Aside from the numbers, the comments made by, uh, in particular, Senator Graham, uh, but also a, a Democratic senator who I name escapes me at the moment, are a pretty uh, stark repudiation of not just the White House, the budget director, um, his, his earlier comments of this, but also the president and the secretary's own comments about the utility of soft power in other words, di diplomacy. Did, do, you, do you guys have anything to say about uh, about the fact that the lawmakers seem to uh, hold it in a higher regard than the current occupants of the current leadership? Of the, of the I, I don't government? know that that's really the case, Matt. I mean, no? we, okay. we, you know, we take our job here and our mission here very seriously, as does Secretary Tillerson. Um, the President asked Secretary Tillerson to do this job many months ago uh, because he felt that he was the best person for this job. So um, just because a budget reflects a smaller number on the part of the administration does not mean that diplomacy is not important. Uh, this administration values that. We all value that. The 75,000 people who work here each and every day here and around the world value that, and we keep pushing forward with that, okay? Thanks. All right, guys, Senator, leave it there. Got to go. We've got to go. Can you give any more information on that? I cannot, other than to say the investigation is ongoing. Uh, we anticipate that whenever we have new information on that and we can bring it to you, we certainly will. Okay? Thanks, Thank everybody. You.